everybody. Welcome back. I hope everybody made it through the holidays okay. I know that it can be rough for people who have no family or weird fucking families. It can be a whole fucking spectrum and I understand. I'm fucking here for you. Since I'm a fugitive from justice from my home state of Oregon, man, I miss my family every single fucking holiday. But me and the wife had a lot of fun, so it turned out okay. I've also spent a shitload of holidays locked up and I'm learning to understand how the fuck it feels to miss your people when they're fucking locked up in the fucking pen on holidays and you can't see them. So I know both sides now and fuck that. Oh, I'm kind of procrastinating because I don't really want to do this fucking video, but it's important and we're going to get into it right now. Today we are talking about Miracle Village, Florida. It is an entire town, basically just a trailer park, but a town made up of almost entirely fucking sex offenders, predatory, pedophiles, the bad ones, the rapists, the fucking diaper snipers, those pieces of shit. Yeah, this is an entire town of these motherfuckers. And yo, I'm not even gonna lie to y'all. I went balls deep down the fucking rabbit hole with this one. I checked out a bunch of articles, watched a bunch of videos, checked out a shitload of fucking pictures, news clips, the whole fucking shebang, right? Just accumulating in information and knowledge about this fucking place so that I can present the information to you guys and see what y'all think about this shit. At the end of the video, I'm going to give my personal opinion on this shit, but I'd like to hear what you guys think too, man. Drop that shit in the motherfucking comments for me. This particular fucking subject gets me all the way up my own motherfucking ass, right? Because I myself am a childhood sexual assault survivor. So this was a lot of shit that was triggering for me. It was hard for me to process. It took me a couple days to really get through this, but I did it and I've compiled it in a way that I think is precise and concise and shouldn't be too arduous for y'all to get through. Anyway, on that note, let's fucking go! There may be no uglier word in the English language than pedophile. It conjures up thoughts we never want to have of monsters preying on innocent children. As reviled as they are, though, pedophiles lurk in greater numbers than most of us know, and ignoring they exist won't cut it anymore. In America, I've just visited one of the most confronting places I've ever been. A trailer park that's entirely inhabited by pedophiles. Okay, so if you're anything like me, my first fucking initial question was, who is this set up to protect? The community or these fucking monsters? And apparently the answer is both. You see, the great state of Florida, and I fucking mean it when I say that, that wasn't sarcastic by the way, Florida has made it harder and harder for these people to find places to live within our community. Miami-Dade County specifically has raised it from a thousand feet from any school zone, any bus stop, any church, any place like that, to 2,500 feet these motherfuckers can't reside within. So bit by bit, we're doing what we need to do, which is force these monsters completely out of fucking society. So Miracle Village was set up out in the middle of absolutely fucking nowhere, but fuck Egypt, sugarcane country, Florida. This place is actually set up on an old sugar mill plantation. But the problem is that there are still families and kids that do reside within this place. And that's what freaked me smooth the fuck out. Some of these sex offenders still have their fucking families. They get out of fucking prison and their fucking wives or their fucking partners are like, hey, I don't care that you touched other people's kids. Sure, I think you're safe to be around ours. We're gonna move in with you in this fucking sex offender village. Fuck all that. The 37 year old former music teacher is on probation for inappropriately touching one of his male students. Even after sex offenders do the time, they still pay for their crime. I think the biggest challenge is just that scarlet letter that's tattooed to your forehead. Now, I don't think he meant to bring this up, but I think this is a brilliant fucking idea. We should absolutely tattoo pedophile across each and every one of these bitches' foreheads. But that's cruel. They're gonna carry that for the rest of their lives. Trust me, the victims of fucking childhood sexual assault, they carry that shit for the rest of their fucking lives too. State lobbyist Ron Book has been behind the push to enact stricter residency laws. Sir, I think you fucking dropped this. One in three girls and one in five boys will be molested before they turn 18. One in five children who put their fingers on a keyboard of a computer will be solicited for some improper sexual activity before they turn 18. Ninety percent of the individuals that suffer from a developmental delay will be offended against in their lifetimes. Did you hear those fucking statistics? Did you fucking hear that? 90% of developmentally disabled kids, 
90% they are deliberately going after the ones that they think they can victimize and get off scot fucking free. Think about that. Take all the time that you need and then tell me that we shouldn't put these monsters the fuck down. We got a pandemic in America. We got to do everything and anything we can to protect our kids. But the problem of housing persists. Village officials say they receive 100 applications a month. They accept one in 25 offenders, many of them straight out of prison. Were you listening? Do you want to do some math? It's fun, I promise. So if they get 100 applications a month and they accept one out of every 25 offenders, that's four offenders they get to go in. So the other 96 are still in our fucking community. Where? Where are they? Where? Are they fucking lurking in the bushes? Are they fucking living next to you? Are they fucking slumming the streets around your kids where they get the bus for school? How is this fucking acceptable to anyone who lives in this country? And inevitably, somebody's gonna go, dude, you're going really hard on these dudes. They did their time. What if they're rehabilitated? Let's look into that. Bill spent almost 20 years behind bars and underwent intense therapy. But he tells me he doesn't think he's been cured. I don't think it'll ever go away, you know? You just learn how to manage it, how to control it, how to not feed it. So that feeling is still there with you? The desire, absolutely, absolutely. When it comes down to the safety and innocence of our children, sorry, Bill, I've heard enough. It, but if you think about it, what does a predator do? It, it, it cuts the weak and the young out of the pack and it, and it preys. Okay, that's what I did. So it fits. I, I think it does. I absolutely think it does. I'm not gonna lie, it kind of fucks me up to agree with the sex offender, but we're on the same page here. But all we're talking about is what we feel. What are the facts? What is the science behind it? What are the professionals saying? By exploring the brains of convicted pedophiles using MRI scans, Dr. Cantor discovered a dramatic cross-wiring in the connective tissue. All the evidence suggests that pedophilia begins in the womb, a person does not pick it, and despite every kind of treatment that has been attempted over a century, nothing has been shown to be able to change these people from pedophiles into non-pedophiles. Well, that sounds pretty fucking conclusive to me, and what he's saying in layman's terms is there's no fucking cure for pedophilia, except... But let's be realistic. In a practical sense, where does that leave us? What does that actually fucking mean to society? What should we be doing with these people? How should we proceed? The place to start any kind of policy is this is biological and it's not going to change. So what he's saying is that this is all wiring in the brain. This is neurological. So even chemical castration is not going to stop these people from their fucked up urges. And like we heard earlier, this is a fucking epidemic that is going on in our fucking country. Letting these people live rampantly throughout our fucking community is just not fucking working. So what do we do? Do we keep building communities like this? Will they even let themselves be put into communities like this? The sex offenders we spoke to say they don't want to live in Miracle Village for the rest of their lives. What they want is to live freely. Should have thought of that before you put your fucking dick in a kid, bud. And the fact of the matter is that Miracle Village seems to be working. It seems to have them all in one place. Law enforcement says that it's much easier to track them, it's much easier to hold them accountable, and it's much easier to keep them away from future victims. So if we're not going to dust off my old guillotine, this might be a practical application. Not a solution, but at least something to get us there in the meantime. But what is the security like in a place like this? Why don't we take a look at the facilities? Now I looked through shitloads of footage and I didn't see any security gates. I didn't see any barbed wire. I didn't see any fences. I didn't see any guards. There's nothing, absolutely nothing keeping them from going back into the community and doing the same shit that they did before. But I will tell you what I did notice. This place looks flammable as fuck. My legal counsel has advised me to say that I'm not trying to perpetrate any violence nor encouraging anyone else to perpetrate violence towards this community. Oh, God damn it. Now, I'm not claiming that I am objective when it comes to this subject. I don't want to be fucking objective. I would feel like a piece of shit if I was objective about this shit. This shit I take very personally. But I want to know what you guys think, man. I have cut down a shitload of footage. I've presented the facts that I found to be interesting and relevant. And I would like to know, what is your guys' opinion? What do you think should be done here? The very fact that there are children living at this facility makes me sick to my fucking stomach. But there's less kids in there than there are out here. And there's less 
less opportunities. They're more centralized. They're more scrutinized by law enforcement where they're at. So there's a better chance that they would get caught and get caught fucking immediately. And I 100% realize that this is kind of a departure from my normal videos, man. This is not that lighthearted. This is a little bit dark, but it felt fucking important to me. And I thank anyone who has rode out this ride with me. I really want to hear what your opinions are. One love, be good or be good at it.